want you to open your Bibles tonight to the book of Matthew. We're going to go on a spiritual journey tonight, a journey of revelation. God, by His Holy Spirit, is going to speak to us tonight. Something that if we can get a hold of, I know this may sound overstated, but it's not. Something that we, if we can get a hold of, will revolutionize the impact and effectiveness of our prayer lives to a dimension that it will literally shake the powers of darkness and see a release of God and a move of God unlike anything most of us probably have ever even conceived of experiencing. You say, well, those are big words. You're going to see it in a moment. Amen? So I want you to do this. Put your hand on your head right now. Just say, I take authority over every distracting thought and every high thing that exalts itself against the knowledge of God. And I tear that down right now in Jesus' name. Amen. Matthew chapter 18, beginning with verse 15. Father, help me get through this in less than three hours. Moreover, verse 15, moreover, if your brother sins against you, go and tell him his fault between you and him alone. <laughs> Boy, we could hang out right there all night long. Didn't say go call up your prayer partner. Do you know how much problems we'd stop in the church if we would just obey this one word right here? We'd shut down gossip. Hello. The reality is too many of us in the church are we're too cowardice. We would rather disobey God than avoid the, the situation of confrontation. That's okay. Because the Bible says the fear of man, which that's all that is. The fear of competition, uh, comp com confrontation is the fear of man. The Bible says the fear of man bringeth a snare. <laughs> Okay, it's quiet. Let's move. Uh, we'll, we'll get there. Moreover, if your brother sins against you, go and tell him his fault between you and him alone. If he hears you, you have gained your brother. But if he will not hear, yes, Holy Ghost, I'm going to say that because uh, I got I to gotta say this. That said, if he sinned against you, didn't say if he just did something that irritated you. Don't run up to everybody for every little pet peeve thing and start griping all over them and dumping all over them. Hello. That's not what it said. If he sins against you, if he didn't, you got to let it go. We'll get there a little later. If he hears you, you've gained your brother. But if he will not, take with you one or two more. That by the mouth of two or three witnesses, some say witnesses, Every word may be established. <laughs> and if he refuses to hear them, tell it to the church. But if he refuses even to hear the church, let him be to you like a heathen and a tax collector. Assuredly, I say to you, whatever you bind on earth will be bound in heaven. And whatever you loose on earth will be loosed in heaven. Now, I want to point out something here because this time that he says that, he said it also in Matthew 16, speaking of the heavenly realm and spiritual warfare, but this time when he speaks this, he's talking about dealing with sin in the church and he's dealing without church authority and government. Yeah. And watch what he says in authority. Ever say authority. Verse 18. This is just, I'm not even going, to, I'm not even beginning where I'm going to begin. I just got, you got to see this. It all ties together. It says this from the Amplified Version, verse 18. Truly I tell you, Whatever you forbid and declare to be improper and unlawful on earth must be what is already forbidden in heaven. Amen. 
Hmm. In other words, you're only allowed to declare things to be sin that is clearly declared to be sin by God. Hello. If it's illegal in heaven, then it is illegal here on the earth. And you have a right to declare it. But if it's just your personal pet peeve or your culture, you can't raise it to the level of a sin in order to justify a separation. Are y'all hearing me? But if it is something that truly is illegal in heaven, you have authority to declare it illegal here on the earth. And whatever you permit and declare proper and lawful on earth must be what is already permitted in heaven. So he's saying, listen, I want you got to get the sin issue right in the body of Christ. If your brother sins against you, you got to go fix it because the separation that the offense causes is going to rob you of the power I need you to have to bring heaven to the earth. Because I need a people that know how to tap into the power of heaven and bring it here on the earth. A people that know how to pray, thy kingdom come and thy will be done. A people that have authority. Everybody say authority. Say it again. Say authority. A people that have the, <laughs> yes, Lord. A people that have the right of authority. I got revelation popping in me already. I'm about 10 scriptures ahead of myself. Don't mind me. A people that have the authority, which is, ex Greek word authority is exousia, and it literally means the right to exercise power. I need a people that have the legal right to exercise power here on the earth. And so I've got to deal with the thing that causes the right to exercise power to be stopped. Watch the next verse, verse 19. Again, I say to you, again. Someone say again. So he's, he's referring back to what he just taught to us. Again, I say to you that if two of you agree on earth concerning anything, that they ask, it will be done for them by my Father in heaven. Hmm. If any of you two come into agreement, we're going to go deep into that in just a moment, then you will have the authority, the right to ask for anything and whatever you agree on will come to pass. So if there's anything that's causing to separate, any sin that has separated you two, go get it fixed. And if one will repent and get it fixed, get him out of your mix because I need unity. I need agreement. So you can have the legal right to ask and to bring the things of heaven and manifest them here on the earth. Watch this. <laughs> the Amplified says it this way. Again, I tell you, if two of you on earth agree, harmonize together, make a symphony together about whatever Anything and everything. Oh, anything and e someone say everything. everything. Say anything. Everything. Say everything. everything. I mean, come on. Anything and everything is anything and everything. Anything and everything. How many of you really want to get to the place that anything and everything you ask for happens? Okay, and the rest of you are lying. No, maybe the rest of you don't believe it actually could happen. Come on, we don't speak because just because we haven't seen it, it's manifested yet doesn't mean it's not supposed to manifest. And you're going to begin to understand why. And that God is bringing us to this place that the end time church is going to walk in such a place of authority with him that anything and everything they ask for, anything and everything 
Someone say anything. Someone say everything. And why wouldn't God do that? You know why? Because he wants, he'll do it because he wants to manifest to a lost and dying world that he is who he claims to be and that he has a chosen people and that he is a God that hears and answers prayer. So what's keeping us from this? We'll begin to see. That, you, that anything and everything they may ask, it will come to pass and will be done for them by my Father in heaven. For where, where, wherever two or three are gathered, drawn together as my followers in, into my name, there I am in the midst of them. So let's back up just a little bit. He said, if any two of you agree, everybody say agree. agree. That word agree literally means to be a match. It speaks of the com the complexion of a patch and the original cloth. When, they, when you put a patch on the original cloth and you can't tell the difference, when they line up perfectly, Jesus. it also means <laughs> to be harmonious, to fit together, to be suitable, to be one accord. Someone say fit together. fit together. Say it again. Say fit together. Mm, this is so important. Lord, help me. Harmony. Congruity. It means the congruity of parts to the whole or to one another. In other words, when my people have figured out how they fit together. I didn't say if they just said, Lord, we, we're praying a prayer of agreement. A lot of people say they pray of a prayer agreement, but they haven't fit together in the spirit. He didn't say just pray the same prayer. That's not the prayer of agreement because when you're doing a harmony up here and they're singing a harmony, this one's singing one note and that one's singing another note. It's not that they're singing the same note, but they're singing notes that blend together. And when my people begin to discover who they are and begin to recognize who their brother and sister is and figure out how to fit those pieces together. Somebody's got to help me here. When you learn how to get assembled together. When you learn where you fit and you learn where they fit and you start connecting together, look out. I'm about to release a due dimension of power. If I can just get two to fit together. Huh? I'm not looking for solo artists. I'm looking for a harmony. And then I want to gather some more because I'm looking for a symphony. That they're not interested in playing a solo, but they're focused on blending with somebody else to hit a right sound that penetrates. Shikarama Sunday. Ha. He shikara ma sande. He said, someone say harmony. Say it again, say harmony. See, this is one of the problems we have. We're, try, we, we're either trying to make everybody cookie cutters, make everybody just like everybody else. We come on, somebody. We, 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 in our churches, we do that all the time. We make them all just like the Baptist model or like the Presbyterian model or like the hard-nosed, stiff-necked Pentecostal model. Come on. We try to make everybody the same way and do it the same thing and be the same kind of person, fit into this model. God says, no, I don't need you all to be exactly alike. I need you to figure out what part you are and figure out what part they are, and I need you to figure out how to connect those pieces to Together. Yes, 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 yes. But as long as you're either trying to make yourself superior to the other part, you'll never connect. Because as long as you keep lifting your piece up, you can't connect. Oh, my Father God. And as long as you keep beating yourself up and thinking of yourself too much with insecurity, you can't connect. 
Nakara na shande. Shakara na shande. She. Romans chapter 8. Just go there for a second. I'm mean, sorry, Romans chapter 12. Father, I give you praise. Devil, you're a low down liar. Shikara ma shande. Verse 3. Romans chapter 12, verse 3. For I say, through the grace given to me, to everyone who is among you, not to think of himself more highly than he ought to think, but to think soberly, as God has dealt to each one a measure of faith. Why? For as we have many members in one body, but all the members do not have the same function, so we be many are one body. Hey, stop thinking yourself and stop looking for how you can have a little edge up on somebody else. Oh, my Father God. Why? Because we're a body and we better figure out how to put these pieces together. You see, this is where the root of so much division in the church comes from because we're trying to compensate for our insecurities, so we're looking for a little extra praise or a little extra position or a little extra edge. Well, I, I got a prophetic anointing. Well, I got this. Well, I got that. And we grab onto those things because we want to feel special. Oh, I'm in so much trouble right now. Huh? Or then we sit on the southern sideline which is another form of pride, not haughtiness, but false humility. I'm a good, no, I'm a failure, I'm a nobody, I'm a nothing, I'm a, you know. Don't fit. Don't fit. He says, no, I want you to think soberly. Think properly about yourself and think properly about everybody else and figure out how to get the pieces to connect. Figure out how to assemble. Come on, didn't you see the box? I read it. When I opened this up, it said assembly required. <laughs> Shoo. Hebrews, let, let, let's go to Hebrews for a moment. Half chapter 10. Huh. I'm adding scriptures, so Lord, help me get through this. Hebrews chapter 10. Shoo. Ha ha. Ramo Shande. Someone said the devil's a liar. We got to figure out how we fit. I'm going to show you this too. I'm going to show you what's going to empower us how to fit. And when we fit together. Someone said when we fit together. Say it again. Say when we fit together. Whatever we ask will come to pass. So let me ask you a question. Is us holding on to the things that cause us to be separated worth losing the whatever? Come on. If, I, if, if Bill Gates stood up here and said, if you two can agree, I give you access to my bank accounts, you'd find a way to agree. Come on, somebody, Amen. What's amazing is there's some people that wouldn't. They'd be fighting on how to agree. Oh, you know I didn't hear that. That was good. All right. Come on. Come on. Hebrews chapter 10, verse 23. Uh, yeah, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> verse, where, which one is it? Verse 23, 25. I know we want to go down to 25, but uh, let's go to verse 23 for a moment. Let us hold fast the confession of our hope without wavering. For he who promised is faithful. And let us consider one another in order to stir up love. Everybody say stir up love. We're going to get there in a moment. Stir up love and good works. Not forsaking the assembling of ourselves together. Now we've always looked at that. Preachers have always preached that. Don't forsake going to church. And in a way, it kind of means that. That's part of the meaning. But it's not don't forsake just going to church because there's a lot of people that go to church that aren't assembled. Don't forsake the assembling of yourselves together. Don't forsake for figuring out how you connect with one another. And you can go to church every week and not connect with anybody. And look at the requirement. It's put on, oh, I'm in trouble right now. The requirement is put on you to start finding out how to connect. 
when nobody came up to me and no one shook my hand and nobody visited me and nobody, nobody tried to connect me. Well, well, with your face like that, no wonder. Well, I've seen people come in and visit the church. They come in there and they're like this. And then they walk out. Not a very friendly church. Yeah, you scare us. <laughs> I got to connect with somebody. I got to, I, I spent my life looking for God connections. Come on, I spent my life looking for God connections. And when a God connection begins to happen, I'm telling you, when you get connected to a God connection, stuff starts popping. I'm going to say that again. When you get connected to a God connection, stuff starts popping. You get rightly connected to the right people and look out. And that's why the devil, he'll fight it all day long because he's a scared. He's terrified. God doesn't need 20 million to get connected. If I just can get two or three. He says, I'm going to come back to that in a moment. He says, I agree. He says, anything, he said, uh, it will come to pass or anything will be done. That literally means it will, it will be done. When he says, if you come and agree and it's touching anything, it will be done. It literally means it will come into existence. If any two of you can get so assembled together and so connected together, then when you pray for a specific thing, because that's what it means, when then you pray for a specific thing, because you're already linked together, whatever you ask for, it will come into existence. Shikara mashande. I believe that's why one, the Bible talks about one putting a thousand to flight and two ten thousand because all of a sudden you get the two together and bam. Yeah. Come on, Psalm, oh, Psalm 133. Look at that for a second. Lord Jesus, I'm trying to get past my first verse. Are y'all getting something tonight? Yeah. Uh, Rama this is the intro to the intro. Shoo, ha, ha. Psalm 133. Verse 1, beginning with verse 1. Psalm 133, beginning with verse 1. I keep the busy and the people in the back busy. Here we go. Behold how good and how pleasant it is for the brethren to dwell together in unity. In unity. Someone say in unity. unity. Say it again. Say in unity. What's going to happen? It's like the precious oil upon the head running down on the beard, the beard of Aaron running down on the edge of his garments. It is like the dew of Hermon descending upon the mountains of Zion. For there, some say there. Yeah. Say it again, say there. Yeah. There the Lord commanded the blessing. There the Lord commanded the blessing. What is the blessing? It's not things. The blessing's not stuff. The blessing is the power to prosper in every area element of your life and there God says I'm going to put an anointing on you that whatever you ask for when you're assembled together when you're in harmony with each other whatever you ask for I will bring it into existence thank you Lord Jesus someone said the devil's a liar she caught on my Sunday okay every say agree Say it again, say agree. agree. Remember what we're just talking about. It's not just two people. I, I'm still talking, oh, let's have the prayer of agreement. You know, two people that are like gossiping about each other. Well, I'll just agree with you. I agree. That's not what, that's not what he's talking about. When, you, when I find out who I am in the spirit, and I find out who you are in the spirit, and we find out how to connect those things together, bam, there's power. Because you know what will happen there when we are doing that, thinking of ourselves not too highly, but as we ought, and not too lowly, but as we ought, then I can move an anointing for a moment, but then you got a gifting in a certain area, and I can yield that to you and let you pop up, then you can yield back. Yeah. That's right. That's right. <laughs> Instead of a bunch of people sitting around, Thousands of people watching Steve Stunning get up and strut his stuff and say, oh, I wish I was so anointed. You are so anointed. You're just anointed different than I'm. Oh, glory to God. And if we could ever figure out how to get assembled together. That's why he said, do not forsake the assembling of yourselves together, but do all the more so as you see the day approaching. 
It's not just the guys. Come on. You don't understand. We got huge gatherings, but not much assembling. Now watch this. Ha. Then he, he reinforces it. He's hitting the same theme. He says, for wherever two or three are gathered, there's that same word again, that assembling, gathered together, drawn together as my followers, watch this, in, is from the Amplified, into my name. Huh. Someone say into. You know that word into means? It literally means to come into or under be drawn in and the word name there means authority if any two or three get assembled together in my authority because it's the only way they're going to get assembled together when this one gets in my authority and this one gets in my authority then the pieces start fitting together but as long as this one has a bit of rebellion in their heart Hello. As long as this one's got a little bit of hesitation to hide, I can't put the pieces together. So they got to get connected. That's why I preach around here that everything in the kingdom of heaven is about authority. Sin is an authority issue. It's the rejection of God's legal right of authority over your life. Repentance is an authority issue. It's now a choice to change your mind about rejecting God's legal right of authority and now accepting God's legal right of authority in your life. That's why he said, seek ye first the kingdom, authority talk. Seek first the kingdom. Seek first the kingdom, the king and his way of doing things. Get under the authority of the king and what? All these things shall be added. Why are they going to be added? Because when you get under the authority of the king and I get under the authority of the king and we start getting connected in the authority of the king, whatever we touch in agreement will come to pass. We'll never lack anything. So the devil fights and he 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 fights us. Every little pet peeve, little nothing to get us to separate. Every little fear, every little insecurity, every little lie, every little habit, every little irritation. Come on, somebody. Am I talking today? Come on. Everybody. I just don't agree with that. I just don't agree with I, I, We've had people in this church, and we're growing tremendously God's blessing, but I've had some people come in. They sit in there for four months, five months, six months, getting touched, getting breakthroughs from God. I preach one thing that they don't exactly agree with. Well, I can't sit in a church where I don't agree with everything. Well, you ain't going to sit in no church. Come on, when did you become the wisdom in ancient of days? We all see through a glass darkly. We're all going to get to heaven and say, wow, did we have that messed up? Hello, a little humility goes a long way. Come on, those of you with teenagers or had teenagers, you know what I'm talking about. They hit about 14, they know everything. And if they get a breakthrough by the time they're 24, because when they're 14, their parents are stupid. When they're 24 and they're still barely working at McDonald's, <laughs> they realize their parents might have known something. Those of you that have grown in the Lord, the older you get, they realize the less you knew. Come on, amen. Shoo. Got it all figured out. See, and that's what, what part of what happens too. Because people are looking for a place of superiority to make themselves feel valid. Because we have lost the revelation that our validity and our sense of value and our sense of worth doesn't come from our individuality, but our corporate unity. Because we are nothing by ourselves. Wow, okay, let me drop that. Let me hit that one again. Let me, let me go after America for a moment. American mindset. We are nothing by ourselves. We have only become something in Christ. He has made us one in him. Though we're many parts, many members, we're one body. We are the body of Christ, not the bodies of Christ. Come on. Come on. Come on. Come on. Come on. 
but we grab onto little pet peeve doctrines and we shove them down people's throats because we want we use them to pump ourselves up y'all don't hear but they, we use this to pump ourselves up in order to justify our isolation and separation in order to make us feel more valid uh, more powerful more spiritual I tell you, I believe we're going to get to heaven and the thrones are going to be filled with a bunch of people we probably didn't think were very spiritual. <laughs> okay, move along, move along. First John chapter 3, I've got to my second verse finally. Outside of the 20 I've already added. <laughs> All right, I'm past my intro. Beloved, if our heart Remember we talked about the sin? Because he said, he first said, we just were dealing with that. If your brother sins against you, go and get it right. Why get it right? Because I need you to be in unity. So you can pray and bring heaven to earth. So you can pray and what you pray will come to pass. Now watch this. Beloved, if our heart does not condemn us, we have confidence towards God. Oh, if you didn't hear that message on confidence last week, you got to go back and get that. Yeah, wow. Yeah, Bishop Jeff was in here. He, we went out to eat afterwards. He turned to me and he said, and he's been all over the world, ministered all over the world. The guy is connected. He was in here church Sunday morning after he shared about that we've come together and we now have 811 churches that are under our spiritual covering and authority and, and also the largest archaeological dig in Israel is now under our authority and all of this other stuff. So he's in here and a general from Israel calls him up while he's in church. <laughs> and he said, General, I'm in church. He said, I don't care. <laughs> you, need to, you need to get to the bank and give me some money. He says, it's Sunday. I don't care. Go to the bank and get them to open. <laughs> hey, when you got a general and a Jew in one body, it's scary. <laughs> he might be saved, but oh, glory to God. <laughs> but he said, I've never heard, never heard a message like that on confidence. I've never heard a message like that. He said, you could have asked me before tonight's service how many times confidence appears in the Bible. I would have thought once or twice. He said, I never realized how powerful it was all over. So, beloved, if our hearts do not condemn us, we have confidence towards God. And the word toward literally means emotion towards. When we, if our hearts don't condemn us, we have confidence to move towards God. And whatever we ask, someone say whatever. whatever. Say it again, say Whatever. Whatever we ask, we receive from him because we keep his commandments. We're under his authority and do those things that are pleasing in his sight. See it tied together, the last verse? And, oh, Ramashande. This is his commandment. You're going to begin to see it tied together here. This is his commandment. First off, that we should believe. Every say believe. Now, that word believe is the Greek word pisteo. It is the verb form of pistis, which is faith. Believing is active faith. Now, faith, when you look up pistis in the original meaning, one of the definitions of faith is fidelity. Fidelity is loyalty to authority. I told you everything in the kingdom of heaven is about authority. Faith is an authority issue. Faith is not just some feeling. It's not some emotion. It's not something you work up. I got faith. I got faith. I believe. I believe. Faith is simply this. I choose to submit to the authority of God's word and trust in God's word irregardless of my circumstances. And belief is acting on that submission to God's word. Now watch this. So let's put it together. Woo, glory to God. This is... This is his commandment, that we should act in submission to the authority on his name. We should act in submission to authority. What authority? The authority of the name of his son, Jesus Christ. And what are we to do when we act in submission to the authority of the name of Jesus Christ? And love one another. Someone say love one another. Say it again, say love one another. Love say it again, say love one another. Love one another. <laughs> Why? 
Why should we love one another? <laughs> you want to know why we should love one another? Why? Because love, and I'm going to get there in a moment, but love is the thing that binds us together. Colossians 3, verse 14. Let's go there for a moment. Oh, you guys don't have it? I'm going to read it from the English Standard Version. Colossians 3, and then I'm going to go back to this. And above all these things, put on love, which binds everything together in perfect harmony. If any two of you come into harmony, when you pray for any specific thing, it shall be done for you by my Father which is in heaven. So when you get connected, gathered together, when you come, when two or three of you get assembled together under the authority of my name, <laughs> in my authority, in my name, there I am, there my father is, there we are in the midst of you. Now he goes back and says, let's go back to this. I'm going to hit it. Are you all with me on this? Hope I'm not going too fast. And this is my commandment. Remember what he said before? And whatever we ask, we receive of him because we keep his commandments. What commandment? The commandment that we should act in submission to the, his authority of his name by loving one another. And if we'll act in submission to the authority of his name and actually love one another, he will be able to assemble us together so that when we ask, whatever we ask, it will come to pass. <laughs> So what is love? It's, we've talked about this many times. I'm going to keep preaching it until Jesus comes back. <laughs> love, agape love, is not an emotion. You may have emotions when you have it, but it's not an emotion. Even the original language, it's a word that does not have emotion tied to it. Eros has emotion tied to it. Phileo has emotion tied to it. Agape does not. Agape is a decision. It is a deliberate act of your will, a choice to act in the best interest of another, irregardless of the consequences to yourself. So how are we going to, how, how many want that whatever you pray comes to pass? How, how many, uh, say whatever. Hallelujah. Say anything. Amen. Well, come get it. <laughs> now, anything you ask in my name will come to pass if you're in harmony with one another. But I designed it in such a way that you can't get in harmony with one another without a supernatural release from heaven called agape. I set it up that you can't tap in to an eternal principle. See, because I set down laws in heaven that work. And if any two come to agreement, whatever they ask is going to come to pass. Are y'all hearing me on that? So I set it up that people that are living in sin that are not under my authority can't tap in to the power they need to connect with one another. Therefore, they can't get it. Thank you, Lord. Huh? Are y'all getting this? I set it up. Now, the devil knows I set it up that way. So that's why the number one thing he works on in the church is to keep my people separated from one another. Because the devil knows if they ever tap into this thing called agape and actually begin to love one another. Somebody say love. love. Binds us together. Say it assembles us. They were in the upper room. Acts chapter 2, verse 1. Just go there for a second. I got so far. Oh, Lord Jesus. Hallelujah. I almost feel anointed you. 
Acts chapter 2, verse 1. <laughs> when the day of Pentecost had fully come, they were all with one accord in one place. They were all connected together. Now, just 10 days earlier, they weren't connected together. A few weeks earlier, they were arguing who was going to be the greatest. Oh, they, were try they weren't going to fit together because, well, I want to sit at your right side. No, I want to sit at your right side. No, no, no. How dare they ask? Oh, I can't believe those arrogant brothers dared to ask to sit at his right side. Man, why did they ask him before I asked him? I wanted to be there and all this other stuff. And Peter, look at you. You ran and denied it. Oh, you doubting Thomas. Said to stick your finger in there. You know, they weren't in unity. They were scattered. They were running. They had been bickering. They, hello, somebody. Amen. Something happened in the upper room before something happened in the upper room. The Bible says they were in one accord. The only way they got a, a one accord is there was a move of the Holy Ghost before there was an outpouring of the Holy Ghost. Oh, as they went, oh, you'll hear me. As they went in that upper room and waited, the Holy Spirit began to w work on their hardened hearts. And as they're sitting there, and Peter's sitting there looking over at Thomas, and Thomas is sitting there judging Peter, and, and James and John are over there going, Man, I just quite, I wish mama wouldn't ask that question. And they're all, they're, Come on, somebody, amen. But as they're spending some time praying and praying and seeking the Holy Spirit and seeking the promise, all of a sudden something, their hearts started melting a little bit. And they looked over and, 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 and you know, I really do love Peter. And, you know, he did blow, boy, he blew it big. But, you know, we kind of did too, you know. And, and you know, you know, who I, you know, uh, you know, it's all right, man. I love Peter, man. He's like, oh, come on, Peter, man. Give me a hug, man. I love you, man. <laughs> I bet there was a lot of repenting. I bet there was a lot of apologizing. Come on, somebody. And I bet there was a lot of humbling of themselves. We all blew it. We all died, denied. We all ran. We all hid. Oh, God, forgive us all. And they began to be bound together. They were in one place, in one accord. And once they got assembled together... Something shifted in the heavenly realm, and all of a sudden, 10 days of answerless prayer. Oh, God, send the promise. Oh, God, send the promise. Oh, God, send the promise. 10 days, no answer, no answer, no answer. Why? Because he was waiting for them to get together. But the moment they got into one accord, all of a sudden, heaven said, I can't hold the power back. They found the key to unlock the power of heaven. And suddenly... Someone say suddenly. suddenly. Say suddenly. suddenly. Why was it suddenly? It wasn't unexpected. It was the product of what could be expected. But it got to the point they got deep enough assembled. They became of one accord. They became of one spirit. They finally got in agreement and all of a sudden heaven burst it open. And I'm telling you in the name of Jesus, that's how every revival in history was birthed. And often it was with two or three or four or five people that were so hungry for God, that so started seeking God, they so died to themselves, they so came into agreement with one another, that suddenly, boom. And the reason we don't see so much more revival is we got a lot of churches praying for revival because they want to be better than the other church. Oh, my. They want to be the it church. They want the crowd to come to them. They're not going to get us suddenly. They might get a visitation of manifestations, but they're not going to get a visitation of the Holy Spirit. Because when there's a true visitation of the Holy Spirit, love is manifested. Yes. Repentance is strong. Yes. Oh, boy, I'm in trouble now. 
And when I say manifestation, well, Lord, I could spend an hour on that. Whew. All right. Colossians 3.12. I'm going to read it from the English Standard Version. Put on then is God's chosen ones, holy and beloved, compassionate hearts, kindness, humility, meekness, and patience, bearing with one another. And if one has a complaint against another, put it on Facebook. Can I talk with a little apostolic authority right now? You have sinned when you complain about your brother and sister on Facebook before the world. You have violated the word of God. You have slandered them. You have damaged their reputation. Well, it's true. It's irre irregardless. It's true. The Bible says love covers over a multitude of sins. Well, I just got to vent. Jesus. No, you got to repent. That's right. yeah. That's right. Don't you ever, I'm, I'm just going to say it because I'm so mad at the devil. Don't you ever go on Facebook and spew. Amen. Ever. Amen. Ever. Amen. You're going to be held accountable for every word you speak. And that word can spread around the world because somebody heard it and they spread it to somebody else and spread it to somebody else and spread it to somebody else and your words became a poison and a cancer that dug through and did damage and God hates it he hates strife huh Ooh, you're a little harsh tonight it's about time come on amen and if you've ever been talked about on Facebook, you know exactly what I'm talking about. Yeah. Huh? Yeah. You're going to go on those things? Speak words of life. Speak blessing. One person got on Facebook a number of months ago got on Facebook, complained about a particular Wendy's restaurant. It was a lie, what they said. It wasn't true. They perceived it to be true, but it wasn't true. They made a comment. It spread and went viral throughout the country. Wendy's sales in one week dropped 20%. You know what that means? People lost their jobs. That person opening their mouth through Facebook caused somebody to suffer and lose their job. You don't think God has an attitude about that? That's right. That's the word. There's nothing innocent about it. Huh? Because I would not let you stand up here and grab this microphone and start spewing about your brother and sister. Come on, amen. You say, ooh, you seem a little ticked off about that. Yeah, I am. Because I've watched so many people being damaged and so many rumors be spread because people can't con have any bit of self-control. If anyone has a complaint, turn it over and say, Thank you, Jesus. <laughs> if you've done it, repent, move along. Maybe you need to go. If you can't control yourself, cancel that thing. Boy, it's quiet now, man. Huh? <laughs> Northwood Church here, incredible church, wonderful pastor, Bob Roberts. Biggest church planner in America. They had a church they planted, about three years old, had 300 people in it, was doing very well. An incident happened in the nursery. Parent got upset, got on Facebook. The next week when they met together, they had 30 people left in the church. And you don't think God has a problem with that? Let's see what the Bible says. Turn and say, everybody say, I'm going to submit to the authority of his word. I love you. 
but I'm watching your Facebook page. <laughs> I won't rebuke you publicly. I'm not going to violate the word. <laughs> Come on. Bear, <laughs> bear, bearing with one another. We're moving along. You all be happy. Bearing with one another. And if one has a complaint against another, forgive each other. To what dimension? As the Lord has forgiven you, so you also must, must, must. I don't feel like it. Must. You don't know what they did. Must. Forgive. Let it go. You have a complaint. Now, if they sinned against you, I didn't say just, you know, whatever, you know, can't believe they wore that hat. Let it go. <laughs> did you see her hair? I can't believe she did that. <laughs> Let it go. can't believe those worship leader people up there just dancing like that. Let it go. What's with Robert's hair? He's got more lube in there than an oil tanker. Let it go. <laughs> Well, it's hot today. Well, it's cold today. Well, it was loud. Well, the sound was this. Well, the sound was that. Well, the sound meant this. Well, the, the greeter, they shook this hand. They didn't shake that hand. Oh, my Lord Jesus. We're willing to lose the power and authority that whatever we pray will come to pass because we're upset because the temperature was two degrees too hot. <laughs> because you had to park in an overflow parking lot. Because there wasn't some usher out there with a 16-foot umbrella to keep a few drops off your head. My Lord, let it go. <laughs> Amen. We all got to do it. Oh, hallelujah. What a glorious service. Then you're having to wait a few minutes to get out and you start going, bam, bam, come on, move that car. People drive like that. That was me you were honking at. No, <laughs> no, no. stuff in our family my goodness the greatest unity you could possibly have is between the husband and wife the power of authority and we're getting her letting it over we're losing it over toilet paper <laughs> over a toothpaste <laughs> squeeze it in the middle why do you squeeze it in the middle <gasps> you're gonna lose the authority to call heaven down to earth over who squeezes what the toilet seat isn't that important. Put it up, put it down, who cares? Let it go. Come on, man, I'm giving you good ammunition here tonight. You gotta shot me down a little bit. <laughs> You're going to lose the right to literally bring revival because you won't turn off the television and have a little conversation with your wife because you're too busy watching a game you can DVR anyways. Let the God of football go. Besides, record it. Skip the commercials. Skip all the breaks in between. You watch the game in 60 minutes. It's over. It's cool. I'm telling you, I was grateful the World Series Game 6 landed tomorrow. I wanted to have someone to preach to tonight. Come on. 
If you have a complaint against your pastor, I mean, any, are you against your brother? <laughs> your wife, your spouse, forgive. To what dimension? To the name, dimension. That the Lord forgave you, you also must forgive. And above all these things, put on love, which binds everything together in perfect harmony. And let the peace of Christ Ever say peace. peace. It's a Greek word, Irene. Oh man, I'm I got I'm, I'm out of time. Let the peace of Christ. I'm not quite done, so I'm almost there. Let the peace, Irene, literally means at one again. Let the oneness that you have with Christ rule. Ever say rule. rule. That word rule means let it be the umpire in your heart. So let. Your, your unity with Christ be the umpire in your heart on all these situations. Let it, let your unity with Christ be the umpire that makes the call. Not strike and ball, sin and not sin. Let it be the umpire. Let that be the umpire in your hearts to which indeed you are called in one body. And be thankful. Thankful for your brother and sister. And let the word of Christ dwell in you richly. Teaching and admonishing one another in all wisdom. Singing psalms and hymns and spiritual songs with thankfulness in your heart to God. Robert, if you'll come and help play some time to stop preaching preacher music. And whatever you do. Someone say whatever. Whatever, whatever you do. Whatever you do, whatever, includes Facebook, whatever you do, in word or deed, do everything in the name, under the authority of the Lord Jesus. Giving thanks. Whatever you do, do it under the authority of Jesus, giving thanks to God, the Father through him. I'm going to read your scripture and we're going to hit this next week. You're going to get a breakthrough. I'm just going to quote it. How many want to get to the place where whatever we ask for? It's not 56 steps to great faith. It's one. It's called love. Get connected. Get divinely connected. So Bishop, Jeff and myself, we've gotten connected. The church here, we've gotten connected. All of a sudden, there's 20,000 souls. This word God gave me, they connected to it. 20,000 souls, not just saved, but disciples. They're taking the discipleship course. We've got nine church. We haven't even presented it yet. You guys understand, we haven't gone public with this yet. Nine churches, including Gateway, jumped on board with this. We're getting calls from other cities already because the word's getting out. The 811 churches around the world are now on the discipleship course on top of the 200,000 people that have already gone through and completed the course. God showed me in a vision a million people discipled. He showed me that back in the 90s, right before I developed this course. Never thought it was possible. Now, all of a sudden, it could happen in a matter of the next couple years. But something happened. We got connected, and all of a sudden, everything started popping. We're, we were upstairs having a meeting today, giggling, like little school kids giggling over all the stuff. It's just happening. And then there's other things that are popping. He got asked today to be a producer of a major motion picture. What? Where'd that come from? Huh? Are y'all hearing me? One of the other guys upstairs, his son was offered the lead in a major Hollywood movie. The lead. And God hadn't read the script. It was just going to be his break. God hadn't read the script and saw there was some stuff about homosexuality and stuff in there. He turned it down. That was yesterday he turned it down. Today, he got a call from another company, a Christian company, and they gave him the lead on another movie.
But things are popping. Things are happening. Things are popping in, in their lives. Things are popping in us. Why? Because people got connected together. And now other churches are jumping together. I've never seen this. I've, 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 never, se I've never seen churches join together in a local city on a project like this so quickly. There's, there's like no hesitation. They're all like, oh, yes, 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 we're, we want to be in. They're begging us to come in. But you know, I, I believe one of the reasons why. Because we, we went to them. God told us to do this thing. So we've got the whole course laid out. And then we're going to them and saying, well, they're coming to us already, but we're going to go to others and say, here's this thing. We don't want your people. Help us work with, let us work with your evangelists to teach them to raise up people in your church to soul win, to bring them to your church. And oh, by the way, we're paying for it. We're not asking you to pay for it. We're not asking any, we're not asking you to sacrifice for. We're not asking you to give up for. We're just asking you, you have somebody that's evangelist in your church? Let us work with them to help you so your church can grow. We don't want them to come over here. We don't want them to join our church. We're going to reach 20,000 souls probably in a year. I can't handle 20,000 souls here. I can't disciple 20,000. You need to be a part. And they're like, they're like, we haven't heard of this before. Why not? It's the kingdom of heaven, church. All right. Let me read you a scripture and I'll, I'll let you go. How many churches in Dallas-Fort Worth can the preacher preach for over an hour when he says, I'm ready to shut up, and people are going, oh, I pay them well. That's my oh section. <laughs> Worship team, why don't you come on up? John 17, 21, 22, and 23. We're going to go into breakthrough next week on this. That they all may be one. King James Version. <clears throat> As thou, Father, art in me, and I in thee, that they also may be one in us, that the world may believe that thou hast sent me. And the glory which thou gavest me, I have given them, that they may be one, even as we are one. I in them, and thou in me, that they may be made perfect in one. And that the world may know that thou hast sent me and has loved them even as thou hast loved me. How is the world going to know? When they get one, the world's going to know that they all may be one, as thou, Father, art to me and I in thee, to that dimension, that they may be one in us, that the world may believe that thou hast sent me. Why is the world going to believe? Because when they're one, whatever they ask is going to come to pass.